It's probably safe to say that most people have experienced a breakup with a significant other. If you haven't, man, you're lucky, right? But so how does this, you know, what does this have to do with thought forms? When you put enough energy and emotion into anything, things can tend to manifest on the astral realm or in other realms. So your typical breakup, and if it's between two people that are very, you know, high in energy and emotions, what can actually happen is all those negative thoughts, feelings, what have you, can manifest into a negative thought form. Now you may be thinking like, well, like I had a breakup with somebody, did it create a thought form? Maybe, maybe. Not, al not always does this happen, right? Like I said, it takes somebody with a lot of energy and a lot of emotions and the ability to manifest things. So some people can do it, some people might not be able to do it. So it all depends on certain things. Now typically, if you are a psychic or a medium or have any of the clairs or any other abilities, you are more than likely able to do this. And, you know, it is what it is. We are creators, right? We are part of the God particle. So, and you always have to remember this lesson. What happens here on this earth realm always has an equal effect on the other realms. It's like energy cannot be created nor destroyed, it only transforms. So, for example, you go through this breakup and, you know, there's a lot of anger, a lot of shouting, a lot of crying, all that energy is being put into the universe, into this realm, and then it then transforms into whatever, a thought form, onto the next realm. Sometimes, you know, it's a poltergeist. Usually it's a type of poltergeist or, and when I say poltergeist, a lot of, most post poltergeists are thought forms, right? So for lack of confusion, we'll just say that, you know, this energy transmutes into an entity. Now this entity can become self-aware and have its own consciousness, or it can also not be aware at the same time. So it can create two different kinds. You either have one with the consciousness or one without the consciousness. And you know, if it's enough energy for s amount of time and it keeps going, right? And it's strong and whatnot, it can develop its own consciousness. I don't care what anybody says. Um, these thought forms can create its own consciousness. So I thought it would be a good idea to just kind of push out this information here because it's very important that we as human beings work on controlling our emotions and being aware of the stuff going on around us. Now, if you're someone who doesn't believe in the whole spirituality, whatever, and you know, the whole entities and spirits and whatnot, cool. I'm not here to convince you. But for those who do and are on this journey with me, yeah, keep watching this video. <laughs> but so, yeah, what do we do about it then? How do you stop yourself from feeling these feelings? I mean, you know, we're humans after all, right? So, guys, it is normal to feel sad or angry or what have you when a negative event happens to you. And it's not just breakups. I'm just using breakups as an example because I had a client recently where, you know, she had roommate, she had a roommate and she, that roommate had an, um, an, a relationship with somebody and they broke up and that caused a lot of negative energy in that apartment and it caused a thought form entity that just wreaked havoc in her apartment. And so I had to help her, you know, I had to tell her what it was, how to get rid of it, and stuff like that.
but it is settled. But it's important to note that, to pay attention to your feelings. And sometimes it's good to just go to therapy, because if you're not someone who's self-aware, like, I mean, I'm pretty self-aware, but like if you're not self-aware or someone that understands how your mind works or your thoughts or your feelings, therapy is a good option, right? There's nothing wrong with it. But that's where meditation comes in. And if you can sit with yourself, whether your eyes are closed or whatever, and it doesn't even have to be your typical like eyes closed, legs crossed, sitting in position, right? And trying to shut your mind off. Meditation can be whatever you want it to be. So I highly recommend if you haven't started meditating yet in this community, or even if you're not in this community, start meditating because it is very beneficial and there's a lot of scientific evidence proving that is really good for your health, mentally and physically. And so what I like to do is when I do meditations, I'll have certain goals for each meditation. If I wanna astral project and you know do work, that's what I'll set the one meditation for. But in this example, you would want this meditation to assess your thoughts and feelings, why you feel a certain way, and once you get to know that part of yourself, it's easier to control your reactions. And things that may have set you off immediately might not set you off anymore, or it'll be less, you know, crazy. <laughs> and, you know, I say crazy less or I say crazy loosely. I'm not saying like you're crying or it'll help dilute the amount of chaos anyway. So yeah, meditation. Work on meditating with yourself and your thoughts. Set the goal you want to analyze your thoughts. An example would be, let's say you were at the grocery store and someone gypped you in line, right? And you got so angry, right? You just wanted to scream at the person and maybe you did, right? Well, sit with yourself and ask, why did you react that way? Were you angry because that person, you know, jumped in line after you've been waiting there for a while? Did it bring up memories of something traumatic that happened to you or someone you know, you know, that caused that response? Why were you angry? And then it's always good to understand, well, the other side too. Why did the person do that to you? Maybe they're having a bad day. Maybe, you know, they were in a rush. You gotta look at other perspectives other than yourself, right? And I know that can be very hard. I mean, in the beginning it was hard for me. I was such a reactor mentally sometimes, depending on what was going on. I may be quiet, but in my brain, like, I'm right? But you know, it's always good to assess why did you do this? Why did you react a certain way? And why do you think the person did what they did? And it actually helps you understand and just build a better understanding of how or why people do what they do. And once you understand why a person did what they did, it actually kind of makes you less aggravated, right? Not always, but you know, it kind of like takes you down a notch. And, you know, I learned a lot about this in criminology classes in college and sociology, psychology courses, human behavior courses. And I feel like, you know, it has helped me better assess the things going on around me. Also, there's another, um, I don't know if I would consider him an influencer, but Sadguru. I don't know if I said his name right. I'm not sure. But he actually has a good video, and I'll link it or put it somewhere down below or up here, where he talks about anger and how anger is a person's response when they don't know how to, you know, handle their own feelings, which kind of makes sense in a way, okay? Now, obviously, if something traumatic happens to you, like a tragedy and justice isn't served for it, you know, yeah, it's understandable. It is very understandable. And one cannot just forgive so simply. But when you do forgive, it is easier to let the situation go. You don't have to forget, obviously, but all that negativity that's building up in your body, 
can be released. And there's a difference between that and then just screaming and, you know, carrying on and, you know, fighting and all that stuff. Because when you do that, that's when it creates bad things like thought forms. Whereas when you do the forgiving and all that stuff, it kind of transmutes into more of a pure energy, if that makes sense. So, yeah, you gone through a breakup. Watch yourself. But yeah, I just wanted to, you know, briefly talk about this and explain to you guys that, you know, you always got to pay attention to your thoughts. And I know I've been talking about thought forms for a while, but it's honestly important because that is the most common entity that I find in clients' like space. So, yeah. Keep it that in mind. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hopefully this helps. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, leave them down below. I'll be happy to answer them.